Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video, I'm Get Good Guy, and we're now at a stage in Battlefield 1's life cycle that multiple DLCs have provided us with many weapon variants from which to choose from. So today, I'm going through the very least used of each weapon type, explaining why they're so infrequently selected, and whether I understand that reasoning, and whether I think the weapon deserves to be at the bottom of the pile. To ascertain which weapons are the least used, I've looked at what the percentage kills for each weapon type are. I did this across a few days of recording, so I simply chose whatever was lower so far on that given day and all of the selections are regularly down at the bottom anyway. So we'll open up with the IMG or LMG as nobody really seems sure which it is, 08 slash 18 suppressive from the Apocalypse DLC. Now I think this could be down at the bottom because firstly it's a DLC weapon so it isn't available to everyone, secondly it's also from the latest DLC which means it's probably seeing even less usage than it otherwise would and thirdly perhaps people just don't like the pairing of its faster fire rate with the suppressive scope, or they just find other scoped LMGs do a better job of picking people off at range. Now personally, I do understand these reasons. You can't argue with usage numbers based on DLC play, but its selection based on performance also kind of makes sense. I actually really like the weapon. I find that LMGs tend to miss a lot of shots now when you aren't perfectly still, so the higher fire rate helps to negate that somewhat. Although many people probably just stick to the low weight variant for that reason. Overall, I don't think it truly deserves its place at the bottom of the pile. There are worse LMGs LMGs in my experience, but at the same time, I do kind of understand it. Moving on, we now have the 12G Automatic Hunter, as I'm splitting the shotguns and SMGs into two different selections. This weapon has been available since BF1's launch, and I probably don't need to say too much about this one as most people will understand and agree. The 12G Hunter is probably the least popular shotgun because it just doesn't hit hard enough. It's so much weaker than other shotgun options, and the rate of fire really doesn't seem to make up for this. Plus, the extended variant has more shots to play with if you're missing or simply not doing enough damage. The extra accuracy that the Hunter has over the extended really doesn't make up for this as it's almost a non-factor most of the time. If you aren't doing much damage, then you aren't doing much damage. So yes, this does all make sense to me and I absolutely completely think it deserves to be the least popular shotgun by a long way. When you can instead pick the M97 or the Shogun for reasonably fast firing shotguns, in comparison the 12G just isn't good people, it just isn't good. And now onto the least used SMG and we have the RSC SMG Optical, again from the Apocalypse DLC. I reckon this is the least used because of the DLC reasons I listed for our LMG pick earlier on, but you can also add that it's a skill cannon, requiring very reliable aim, reactions, positioning and knowledge of surroundings in order to get off frequent reloads. It's just nowhere near as forgiving as other SMGs. I mean this has 9 rounds and the Hellregal Factory has 60, it's not hard to work out. But also, I think it's the least used because you can combine that with the requirement of getting 300 explosive damage to vehicles in a game in order to unlock it. Either some players can't pull this off or simply don't want to try. And these reasons I totally understand. If the gun won't offer much to most players, why would they take on that assignment to unlock it? Especially if they already have the factory variant. But do I think it deserves its place as the least used SMG? No actually, I have a different opinion to most. I think it's super powerful when used correctly and is comfortably better than something like the machine and pistol currently. And now onto our penultimate weapon, the General Lu Storm from the In the Name of the Tsar DLC. This weapon likely suffers from being a DLC weapon again, although not as heavily as previous guns because it was an earlier release. But I think it does suffer because the unlock for the factory variant is seemingly much easier for most players. The factory can be unlocked by using the Mondragon Storm and performing squad revives. The Storm requires the player to use the autoloading 8.35 marksman and to get rifle grenade kills. Now I'm not sure about the rifle nade part, but the autoloading marksman is another skill cannon and thus is a lot less forgiving than the Mondragon. On top of that, I think most players then won't be excited about the 6 available rounds for the general Lou. So basically, yeah, I understand. It's not a bad weapon as such, it's just there are so many other options that can do what this weapon can't. Plus it's competing with the autoloading and the self slider 1906 for the medic skill cannon slot. Both of those weapons were available in the base game and didn't require a DLC purchase. So does it deserve to be the least popular? I think yes, not because it's necessarily bad. Add, it's just not one of the stronger guns in a very competitive class. And now we have the M1917 Enfield Infantry and no, I'm not doing it. If you want to know why, you can go and watch this review I made of the weapon. I refuse to go and put myself through getting footage for this thing again. I hate it, I can't see anything through the sights, yes it deserves to be bottom, job done. 
And with that said, those are the least used weapons in Battlefield 1 and my reasons why they do or do not deserve to be. So let me know what you think of the weapons in the comment section below. Have you even used them and which other weapons do you not like? Now we need to quickly shoot over to the Board of Awesome to show our respect to the fantastic people who choose to support the channel on Patreon. They do so purely because they want to help to keep the channel going and it's making a massive difference. I really wouldn't be able to do this the way I am currently without them, so thank you. If you want to join them on the Board of Awesome, then the link to the Patreon page will be in the description below, where you can support the channel from as little as $1 a month if you so wish. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos, and feel free to like, favourite, and subscribe. I'm Get Good Guy, and I'll see you next time. Laters.